This video is brought to you by our good friends at Ridge. Their incredible wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. Plus, it doesn't awkwardly bulge out of your back pocket because it goes into your front pocket. Now is the time for you to upgrade your wallet. I want you to check this out. Ridge wallets, hold up to 12 cards, plus all the cash you need. There's over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It is the best wallet you can buy, and you don't just have to take my word for it, because there's over 30,000 five-star reviews. I was skeptical at first, but once you try it, you'll never go back to your old wallet. And guys, there's no pressure. Test it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back, get a full refund. When you decide to keep it, there's a lifetime warranty. Go to ridge.com slash chael and be sure to use the promo code chael. That's going to get you 10% off with free worldwide shipping and returns. Or just click on the link below. John Jones, talking about himself, said, My candle at light heavyweight had blown out and it showed in my last performance. Now, what is he talking about? John's last performance feels like it was three years ago and it, I believe, was against Dominic Reyes. I also thought that John lost that fight. But John had to show a real heart and he had to show a real grit. It was not the skills, it wasn't the punch and the kicks that brought him from behind. And John's been put in that spot a couple of times where his skill set seems to separate. Well, he's got the longest reach and he knows how to use these elbows and he shows sharp, bony Jones. There's a ton of truth to those skills. One thing that you don't see as much is how tough he is. When it's time to get tough or it's time to be weak, he toughs it out. John's sitting here speaking about he's now remotivated and he's doing that at heavyweight. What if he's telling the truth? And this would not be something that John would come to mislead you, the audience. It's something that he would use the audience as a way of convincing himself. It's very normal with all human beings, and you see it a lot with fighters, and you only know in hindsight who was accurate and who wasn't. You will hear about prime of a career. But nobody ever takes the time to explain, was it his prime mentally? Or are you talking about his physical prime? And once the prime goes and it can never come back, that stuff is largely mental. Largely. It's a pie and there's other pieces to it. And father time is undefeated and all of those adages that you hear. There's a lot of truth to that. But a guy also knows what he's putting into it. I could see it with my own teammates. When I came up through Team Quest, we were very coveted. We had multiple world champions in the room. Everybody in the room was ranked in the top 10 in some weight class or another, broad, broad stroke, but very good fighters. And there was a number of teammates who the more I read about them, the more I saw them in the public eye, the less I saw them at practice. The more practices they were watching from the sidelines or they were showing up later, they were leaving early. It was a very real thing. And I could look at those teammates as hot as their brand was getting and as much as their name was out there, I knew it's a matter of time. They're not putting in the work. They don't have the same focus. They don't have the same dedication. It got taken away. And I would tell you within my own career, I used to look forward every day to going to practice. It was so fun. It was so exciting. I remember the very first day when Dan Henderson and Randy Couture threw me a pair of gloves. They said Harbinger on them. They were Velcroed. You put them on. I mean, I remember these really clear. I remember putting these on and taking my wrestling shoes off, and it was such an exciting moment. I remember the room we were in. I remember the shorts that I was wearing. Like, this was a really exciting day. Everybody will go through that at some point. That excitement, like anything else, will go away a little bit. It starts to become a job. It starts to be something you have to do. That's a reality. But my motivation, that exciting, looking forward to practice, that ended over 10 years before the day I retired. I had five world title fights after that motivation had gone away. And I operated on something called discipline. Here's what I have to do. Here's what needs to be done to move myself towards my goal. I know it. I've studied it. I've done it personally. This is what has to be done. I was able to run on discipline. But if you can set discipline aside and you can operate on motivation, it's a very exciting time. And I work with wrestlers to this day, and I will even help to coach coaches who are talking to wrestlers. And I will tell them, stay away from the word motivation. I will hear people preach to a young group of athletes, you've got to be motivated if you've got to want it. How? What if you don't? What if you are not motivated and you don't want it, but you still expect to win? Can you do it? Well, of course you can. But now you're going to one of the hardest things in life, 
discipline. I'm going to force myself to check these boxes every day. It's a very difficult thing to do. So I want to refer that back to John Jones, because when I heard this interview, John doesn't try to sell anything. It's a knock on him. John is the main event in an arena that's got people dressed up as empty seats. It's a knock on him. John's had to, had to leave a division because he cleaned it out and there was nobody that you, the audience, was captivated enough that perhaps could be John. Even in the fights that he wanted on to have that went on to be blockbusters, you could look at Gustafson part one. You could look at the fight with Santos, where many people thought Santos won. You could talk about Reyes, where I personally thought Reyes won, but not going into them. Coming out, there were these very beautiful performances, and I could give John a number of compliments. I'm talking about the anticipation going into them. Nobody knew those guys could compete with him. And I've never been convinced that that division and John had parted ways as much as John had just passed over the division. He was starting to laugh and he's starting to look at names that he's already been in there with. He's starting to have a bunch of readers. He started his career very young where there were legends in the sport. You could put a poster and, oh my goodness, John's going to be standing opposite. And then you could fill in the blank whether that was going to be Machida or that was going to be Rampage Jackson. I think at one point in time, John Jones versus Chris Weidman was actually headed for each other, even though there were, there were different weight classes. But the point is there were things that we were looking forward to. If that goes away for you, and I have evidence of the fact that it did go away for you. My proof is that the arenas weren't full. That isn't speaking to the skills of John and or his opponent. It's speaking to the anticipation ahead of time. You, the audience, believing you know how the movie is going to end, and therefore, what's the point in buying a ticket? Well, heavyweight is completely different. It's completely different for us. There's questions that we have. There's things that we want to see. So if that's true, which it is, you could exemplify that for what goes inside of John Jones. And now he's finally speaking on it the first time. He's talking about the hunger that he has. He's talking about the excitement he has. He's talking about he's got a point to prove and he wants to go and do it. What if that stuff's true? I will tell you when I hear inside scoop from teammates or coaches or people that are in the room with John Jones, and this is after he left Jackson Wayne. Which means between his last fight and this one, guys, it's through the roof what they're saying about this guy. These rumors on John Jones, it's, it's unbelievable the way that are people that are there and watching him train go. I'm into the experiment. I have been into the John Jones experiment from day one, which is John going into a new weight class. The only part of this that I ever disagreed with was that he needed to weigh 240 pounds. That's a very arbitrary number. But you have to pick a number. Like, there just has to be. You use the world that we're living in where you need six feet of social distance. Well, what's wrong if it's five and a half? Or how come it's not safe? Like, you have to pick a number. It's rel So John picks 240 pounds, and then he updates us all through social media known as Instagram. And the closer he gets to the 240-pound mark, of which he has achieved, the closer he gets by his verbiage to signing a contract and coming back and fighting. However, the story and the anticipation for me, and I speak for the collective me, all of us, still hasn't changed. We want to know how John will do against a bigger opponent, which is where matching them up gets a little bit tricky. We all believe that he should be fighting Stipe. We all believe that he's going to fight Stipe. Stipe in his last fight, and the one before that and the one before that, did not weigh more than 240 pounds, which we know John weighs. Now, John versus Stipe works. I'm not trying to make believe that it doesn't, but it does take away the one question of the John Jones experiment. Imagine John goes to fight Stipe. Just imagine for me, if you will. We don't ever know what a guy's going to weigh. We know what he's going to weigh less than when it comes to heavyweight. He's going to weigh less than 265 pounds. So just imagine John, Stipe, big buildup. They come across the stage. They got off the scale, and they're having the first ever face-off. And you look, and you go, my God, John's bigger. And not only do your eyes tell you that, but then you have the quantifiable number of the scale. John weighs in at a mythical 240 pounds. Stipe weighs in at a mythical, a mythical 231 pounds. You got a problem. And this has been tested. This was tested in Stipe Miocic versus Daniel Cormier, part one. They went and did the ultimate fighter. It was this huge thing. And DC's got the whole champ champ business, but DC isn't big enough for the weight class. Do you guys remember this? Then they do the weigh in. Daniel Cormier weighed, the light heavyweight, weighed in more than the heavyweight champion. 
And the line changed instantly. This is not just my opinion. I'm sharing with you guys a historical fact. The line changed. And nobody ever knows what to make of it. Nobody knows if a guy weighs more. Is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? I can remember being a kid. Mike Tyson had a fight. I believe it was against Lennox Lewis. But Mike Tyson had done the training camp in Hawaii. Nobody knew what he did. Nobody knew how he prepared. He took his team. He took his coaches out there. But the lines moved against Iron Mike just on the fact of where he did a training camp with the belief by the public, how, how much are you going to train in Hawaii? Too beautiful. There's too many options. Why are you going to lock yourself away? Why would you do all the things that you would do, by example, in Big Bear when you're in Hawaii? It was. It, I didn't understand that when I was a kid. I must have been 10, 11, no more than 12 years old when this fight took place. But I remember people talking about it. And I remember thinking it was ridiculous. Then Mike got to the scale. He weighed in the most that he had ever weighed for another fight. Mike Tyson in his prime was anywhere between 220 and 222 pounds. And I can't remember what he came in for this fight, but the line moved drastically. Now you have the narrative going into the fight. How much training are you actually doing in Hawaii? And now we have an answer. If a picture is worth a thousand words, the look of Mike Tyson going to this contest where he prepared in Hawaii was a very different looking Mike Tyson. And when that line moved, Mike got stomped the next night, which was unlike Mike Tyson. This wasn't a back and forth battle. This was really one-sided from a guy that looked as though he was out of shape. Now, I only bring that to you, not to give Tyson a hard time. I'm giving you a historical reference that I happen to live through. And that people that knew more about the fight game than me and also knew human nature and personalities more than I did at that point in my they were all right. Apparently, there is other things to do in Hawaii that's good for distraction. What a guy weighs is very relevant because you're talking about calories in versus calories out. If a guy comes in heavy, you don't have a whole lot of options as to why. He either ate too much of X food or he didn't work hard enough and burn it off, right? It's very straightforward. There's a reason that we weigh them in and make a whole show out of this. It's not just so you can make the contracted weight. It's very relevant what a guy weighs as opposed to what he used to weigh. So if John was to fight Stipe and only the day before we get them on the scale and we find out that John's bigger than Stipe, right? The experiment goes up. It's relevant. As small of a detail as it might be, it would be very relevant. I shared with you guys through my pen pal, who is Stipe's wife, she says that Stipe's put on 20 pounds. I have to assume that those 20 pounds are from the last time Stipe weighed in, of which he weighed 233 pounds. So I'm imagining Stipe weighs 253 pounds. Seeing Stipe at the show when they did the cameo of him over the weekend, whatever he weighs, it's the right way. It's a good-looking and hard-built whatever he's got, but that still preserves the story of can John take on a bigger man. There's a lot of moving parts to this. There really is. But the overarching, the number one thing that John had in this interview, John is a guy who does not sell. He doesn't come out. He does not hype. He doesn't promote. He just doesn't do those things in conjunction with the fact that he had nothing to advertise. He had no date. He had no opponent. I took it as sincere. I took it as a guy who agreed to do an interview who answered the question that was asked of him that speaks to motivation. A motivated heavyweight John Jones is a very interesting prospect. 